to a bubble sort. Now, we can use this sorting method for any kind of objects. Okay, you should take a look at the video on bubble sort if you haven't seen it yet. We can so, for example, this method here basically um, basically says you know bubble sort in an, an array of integers. You could easily implement the same thing in an array of doubles, right? But now, what if there's an object, any object, you know, that you want to implement this? So one could say public, say for example, string array. String is is an object just like any object that you would create, right? So bubble sort str, and then it takes in a string array. Okay, and let's um, let's take a look at this. So all we need to do is basically the the algorithm is the same. So I'm just going to copy this here. Now the problem, of course, is that um, the only problem here is that, okay, you get an array of strings, you initialize your swap variable to true, so you assume that uh, something happened in the array, so you want to kickstart this while loop. Now you will assume that the array is in order, and you will go for, you know, you loop through each element of the array, and you will check whether one element of the array is greater than the other one. Now, this comparison on strings is not good because of that sign, the, the greater than sign, right? There, we need to have a way to compare one, um, one object to another, in this case, strings. So how would you compare strings? The natural order would be alphabetically. Now, luckily, string has a method to compare itself alphabetically with another string. <clears throat> And this is, um, if you will, this this is the compare to method. So let's take a look at let's take a look at um, at this method. So string API. I uh, forgot to put Java. I hope this. Yeah, Java, perfect. So let's look at the API of the string class, and you'll see how to use the compare method. The compare method, by the way. Just if you want to go back to our um, videos on interfaces, the compare to method, which the strings have, come because the strings implement the comparable interface, which demands a compare to method. So we can uh, we could probably read the contract of that method, but let's see the compare to method. Uh, these are constructors. Compare to, okay. Compare to compares two strings. Uh, alphabetically, okay. So the uh, the current string dot compared to another string, and it will return, it will return zero if both strings are the same, both basically contain the same the same um, word, right, or the same sentence or whatever, the same letters. Now less than zero if the string, the current string is less, or should be before in the alphabet than the other string, and a value greater than zero if this string should go later in the alf uh, in alphabetical order than the another string that we're comparing to here. Now, how do we use this method? Well, let's take a look at, at our code. So in here, we will do array, array, you know, the element before the current one, dot compare to, compare to, the current element. So we will say, hey, compare the previous element with the current element. Now, this will be in order if this is greater than zero. Okay? So, uh, I'm sorry, this will be in order if this is less than zero because this element to the left, when compared to the element to the right, should be negative, meaning this guy here goes before in the alphabet than this guy here. Okay? Again, the compare to will return a negative value if this string is less or it goes before this other string. Okay? So that would be fine. Now, if it's greater than zero, meaning this guy alphabetically should go after this guy here, the current guy, then we need to do the swap. Now it's not going. We're not going to swap into an int. We're going to swap into a string, right? But everything else stays the same. 
And the way we can test this, this method is by going to our test sorter and doing the same thing we did with, uh, with uh, uh, sorted uh, integers with a string. So unsorted now is going to be an array of strings. An array of strings, and we're going to uh, have, for example, um, Jones, Alvarez, um, and then Zappa, and then McCarthy. Okay? Joan, Alvarez, Zappa, McCarthy. And I'm going to sort it. I did not call this bubble sort. I call this bubble sort SDR. Unsort it, and this is going to be an array of strings. Right now, I'm just accommodating everything so it works with array of strings. The rest is the same. So let's take a look at this. Let's compile this. Everything compiles. Oh no, incompatible types. Yes, of course. I forgot to turn one of my ints into a string. Okay, let's compile this and run it. And we should see Jones, Alvarez, Zappa, and McCarthy. Run it. And we have, I'm sorry, Alvarez, Jones, McCarthy, and Zappa. So they're alphabetically in order. If you want to see what's going on at each iteration, you can just put, you know, a, a, a print statement right after uh, the for loop for printing the array. So you can say for string alum. This is, this is, we're done with bubble sort. I'm just adding more debug so you can actually see what's going on. Uh, for string alum in array in R, we're going to basically system dot out dot out dot print line alum and plus and then perhaps a hyphen. Okay, so that'll tell you what the what the array looks.